Hi everyone and welcome to another Nanny video. My name is Rachel and today I'm at my desk because I'm going to do a little bit more of an educational video. So a lot of posts have been going around with websites on them which have educational content on them. However, there's no kind of how-to guides or anything for kids to do once they get onto those websites. So I'm going to address that and show you how to use different websites with educational purposes and, and post some documents with some educational questions or how to guides on them um, so that you can do the stuff that I'm going to do at home. So I've switched over to my laptop um, so that we can go onto the website together and have a look through it. So the first thing you want to do is open your internet and once your internet has loaded you want to type in the URL. So the URL for this is kids.sandiegozoo.org then it will take you to the website. So here is the website that we're going to look at today. It's San Diego Zoo for Kids. So San Diego Zoo is in America and they've got lots of different animals and they've um, made all of their animals available to learn about on their website. So you don't even have to go to the zoo to learn about some animals. So when you come onto the page, you've got this lovely little fire gecko there or fire salamander. And then along the top here, you've got different sections, animals, videos, stories, activities, games, and save the animals. So lots of stuff to do. Um, I'm gonna start first with activities and have a look at that. So here we are, we're onto the activities page. Um, it's similar to my how to craft video. So if you'd like me to kind of make any of these, see how easy or difficult they are to make, leave a little comment below. So you've got some coloring in here. We've got some little crafty bits, how to make a lizard there, some very cute ornaments, stuff you can make with recycling in your home, some food bits and bobs, loads of stuff here, uh, some games, loads of stuff to do if you are looking for a little bit more crafty ideas rather than just some educational bits and bobs. So the next bit I'm going to have a look at is the games section. So here we go, they've got a couple of games on here, something you can do maybe once you've Finish looking at all the animals, you might need to have some knowledge before you play them. Um, and the great thing about these is that they're also available on the App Store. You can download them if you've enjoyed any of them onto your iPad or your phone to play at home. So now we're going to look at a few more educational bits. So we're going to go up to the animal section and have a look on there. So here is the animal section. This is what you are greeted with, a little boy looking at a tiger. And down here is where you can filter your animals so you can pick ones you particularly want to look at, but they've got so many animals, loads of animals, all alphabetically ordered. I'm just on the mammals here, but there's loads of amphibians, anthropods, which is insects, birds, fish, mammals, reptiles, loads and loads. And you can look at ones from particular countries, if they're endangered or not. So it's really good to kind of learn about all these different animals. So let's have a quick look on one. Let's look at the arctic fox. So this is what you're greeted with when you come on to an animal. Greeted with a lovely picture and its name. And then you've got what type of animal it is. So this is a mammal. And you've got where it's from. So it's from the arctic circle. So right in the top where it's really cold and snowy. And then you've got its endangered status. So this one is stable. It's not endangered. But the lower down it goes on these, the more endangered it is. And it tells you some facts about it. It tells you how big it is. So it's 20 to 26 inches. So not very big. If you put it next to football, that's how big it would be. Then it tells you what it eats. It's an omnivore. So tells you particularly kind of what it eats if you flip this over and then it lives in a tundra. So let's flip this one over and it tells you what a tundra is. So it's really good at telling you loads of different things about the animals. And then if you come down here, you've got a few more facts about them, maybe about the little baby ones. Very cute. So next I'm going to look at is my personal favourite bit. It's the video section. So in the video section, you can actually watch live what the animals at the zoo are doing. So this is really interesting to watch. Uh, you've got a couple of animals here, but I've particularly been loving watching the penguins. Let's have a quick look at them. So here are what the penguins are doing right now. So those are having a little bit of a bath time, cleaning out their feathers. I've just been loving watching it. If you can get them at feeding time, that's really good as well. Or them swimming about in the little lake there. Very cute to watch. I think this one here is looking for his dinner. So that's really nice, it's quite relaxing as well. And um, if you have a particular animal that you like to look at, 
You can watch them all day, really great. And we're going to move on to the stories section. So here is the stories section. This is great for slightly younger children. It's a way of telling them educational facts whilst also having lovely little stories. So they've got lots of stories about different animals that have come to the zoo. They may not have come in great circumstances, but now they have a great little life. So there's loads of different stories here, great to read at bedtime. So that's the website, that's kind of how to navigate it, all the different parts of it. If you'd like to use it in a little bit more of an educational way with your kids, I have created two different different documents which have questions on them for younger children and a little bit of a fact file creation one for older children so I'm going to take you through them to start with. So here is my worksheet for younger children. I've kind of estimated it's for about five to eight but you'll know best what's the right one for you to use. So it's got the link at the top and then the first one is about the animals so you will find everything you need for that in the animal section of the website. So a couple of questions there, a little bit of a drawing one. Oh, which one is that? And another question. Then the next one is about the animal cameras. Um, so that bit you'll find in the animal camera section. And I've got the elephant cam and the penguin cam because they're particularly active animals. They're great to have a look at. And you don't just have to finish at those questions. You can kind of write down, look at the animals at different times of the day and see what do they do in the morning, what do they do in the evening, and what do they do at night time if you can see them because America's got quite a different time zone from us. And then we've got the story time question. So I'm going to read one of the stories and you can follow along and answer the question. So go onto the Dropbox, print this off, pause this, answer the, the questions above and then come back and we'll do a story together. So I've picked to do the Joey story. So here it is, Joey Joy at the Safari Park. So here we go. Let's read through this together if you can get it on your website and look at the questions in front of you and let's go through it. So keepers at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park had their hands full in a fun way when three baby wallabies called Joey's needed help. The Joeys are Bennett's red-necked wallabies, named Laura, Thelma and Tatum. They were only about six months old when they arrived at the animal care centre. They still needed many milk feedings every day, as well as a cosy pouch to curl up in. A wallaby Joey spends about nine months in its mother's pouch. At the safari park, keepers use a special pouch that's made out of soft material. A mother wallaby would stand up to let her joey stick its head up to see, smell and hear the world. The park keepers hung the pouches in a way so that Laura, Thelma and Tatum could do the same thing. When it is feeding time, the keeper calls a joey by name and waits for it to come out of the pouch. The joey drinks a special kangaroo milk replacer formula from bottles with long thin nipples. The keepers watch the joey carefully as it drinks. If the joey is having a hard time, the keeper will try a different nipple. Once a joey has a full stomach, it often explores the room. Laura, Thelma and Tatum bounce around sniffing this and that. They also have a small mirror. They seem to like looking at themselves. Each day, keepers take the girls outside for some romping in the sun and fresh air, just like a mama wallaby would. When playtime is over, it's back to the pouch for a rest. Inside the pouch is a snuggly blanket and some hay. The keepers put the hay there because a mama wallaby often stuffs grass inside her pouch. Even though her joey is nursing, it begins to eat small bits of plants. Each joey has its own pouch, but sometimes they like to double up. Tatum, Thelma and Laura are growing into great friends. I really like that story, I just thought it was really sweet. So once you've had the answers to all the questions, the answers to all the questions are underneath all of the top bit. So see how you did. So the other worksheet that I did is for maybe slightly older children. First of all, it's an animal fact file. So you want to put the animal's name here and then draw a lovely picture of it. You can draw maybe it as a baby and it as an adult. You could label the different parts of the animal, whatever you want to do, maybe be as creative as you want. And then I've given you some space here to write about it. It's a bit of freedom. I want to see kind of how creative you could be. So you could do bullet points of different facts. You could do one, two, three, four of what you think is the most important fact what you think is the least important fact or you could just write it as a paragraph about the animal using lots of descriptive words. It's a little bit of an extra creative writing task if you fancy it so to write a short story about your animal. So you could start with the sentence one day I went to the zoo and I saw my animal and go from there create something amazing. 
you could do a story about the animals escaping from the zoo and going around the town now that all the humans aren't going out and about or you could do the animals in the wild meeting the animals in the zoo be as creative as you want and i'd love to see your stories please share them with me on the nanu facebook which you can find down below in the description um, so I hope you have enjoyed this how-to guide. There you go, there's my little how-to guide of how to use the San Diego Zoo website and information to go with the sheets that I've created below. I'd love to see anything you do from the website. If you create a fat file, if you do a creative story, if you answer the questions, please let me know and send it to me on the Nanu Facebook page, which will be in the description. Um, if you like this style of video, give the video a thumbs up. If there's any other websites you'd like me to talk through or make a sheet for, um, leave a comment on Facebook and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.